indeed, Master, speak to us this morning. We are ready to hear, O oh Lord. We pray that the word that you have prepared for us will find residence in our hearts and continue to guide us through this world. This is our prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We can sit. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. And all the time. Yeah, I want to thank him this morning for giving us yet another day to hear his word and to fellowship with him. This is the feast of Saint Luke, the evangelist, which we celebrate in this month of October. Date 18th. Who is Luke the Evangelist? Saint Luke the Evangelist is believed to have been born in Antioch, which is modern day Turkey, somewhere in modern day Turkey, to a Hellenistic Jewish family. Hellenistic Jews were those Jews who were born outside Israel, they were diaspora Jews and they were Greek-speaking. This background is likely to have influenced Luke's ability to write very well in Greek and connect with both the Jews and the Gentiles. Luke the Evangelist is a significant figure in our scriptures and specifically the New Testament. Traditionally, he is credited with writing the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. His writings provide a detailed account of the life, ministry, and teaching of Jesus Christ, as well as the doc he documents the earlier days of the Christian church and how the Gospel started to spread, especially in the account, of, the account he gives in the Acts of the Apostles. Luke was a, a, a physician by profession, and we can see in his manner of writing, he was very compassionate and very systematic. His gospel is notable for emphasis on Jesus' compassion for sinners, the poor, and the marginalized. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, Paul reverses him as the beloved physician, hinting at his medical background. Luke is also believed to have been a companion of the Apostle Paul, accompanying him on some of his missionary journeys. Brothers and sisters, Luke was given the ability by God to heal physical illness and also to heal the heart. The gospel that he gave us, the gospel according to St. Luke, emphasizes a lot on the work of Jesus Christ, healing and dealing with the things that can be seen to have been of much concern to the poor, the needy, and those who were marginalized. That in a nutshell, is who St. Luke is. Therefore, let us now come to our sermon, which is titled, Remain Faithful to Your Call. And the theme is, let us see the lessons we can learn from the ministry of St. Paul and the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do that, we are going to reflect on these two texts, Second Timothy, 4, 5 to 17, and Luke chapter 10, 1 to 9. I'm going to summarize, so I want you to be very keen, because if we did uh, a systematic approach, then we will have us here up to 9 o'clock this morning. But I'm going to be very, very brief. These two passages have, two, have one thing in common, because they offer us profound insights into how we can carry out mission for God and also how we are required 
to endure hardship and fulfill God's calling in our lives. We will look at the cost that St. Paul and our Lord Jesus Christ paid in order to complete their tasks, and then we will draw wisdom and encouragement for us to continue with God's mission. We will see how despite the tough circumstances, betrayal, denial, and outright opposition, St. Paul was not deterred from carrying out his ministry. And we can see this in the advice he gives Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 5 to 17. Briefly, I want, to, I want us to reflect on the vigilance and the perseverance. Vigilance because of false doctrine and perseverance because it is never easy to carry out God's mission. It is never easy. It has never been easy to anybody. It was not easy, easy for any one of us to wake up early this morning and be here. It was not easy, and it has never been easy. We have to be vigilant to make sure that what God has called us to do, we will do it. Therefore, in 2 Timothy 4, 5, this is what St. Paul says, but you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all your duties. Other fashions put it this way, be sober in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of the evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. When I was a figure, this, uh, this is a sequence which has been given to us, that we must be sober in all situations. And our Lord Jesus Christ and St. Paul, both of them assure us that hardship will be part of this journey. And when that hardship comes, we must not be deterred. Do the work of an evangelist. The work of an evangelist, for those of us who were here last evening, is to proclaim the good news of Christ to all the people and discharge all the duties of your ministry. So this gives us a hint that proclaiming the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is not the only thing that we can do to proclaim or to do God's mission. We have other things that we can do. The evangelist Luke was a physician treating people, treating the illness of people, and also involved in the gospel of Christ about the kingdom of God and God's mission. This points us to holistic ministry. That as we minister to the people of God, as we tell them about the kingdom, as we introduce them to Christ, let us also see that we deal with other things which may rise up and hinder them from receiving the gospel. St. Paul exhorts Timothy to remain vigilant and endure hardships. This echoes the call to steadfastness in our ministry, reminding us that challenges are an integral part of this journey of evangelism and mission. Number two, St. Paul urges Timothy. Actually, it is a command because he uses the word, I charge you. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Brothers and sisters, I often tell my fellow clergy that if you want to receive these instructions correctly, then be prepared that you are going to carry out ministry out of season. 95% out of season. Because if you say, if you focus on in season, then you will be discouraged. Be prepared to call out the gospel of Christ, even when things don't look like uh, they are good. I think that is what Paul was saying, that be prepared in season and out of season. But one, you correct people's mistakes, you rebuke them, 
and encourage them with great patience and careful instruction. Paul insists on proclaiming the word at all times. He underscores the urgency and the importance of our mission, that we must be ever ready to share good news, no matter the circumstances. Therefore, my brothers and sisters this morning, if you will carry out God's mission, be prepared, march out of season, because many things will come up which will try to hinder you from carrying out that mission. Point number three, that when we are doing God's mission, it is bitter sweet at the same time. St. Paul got support, but he was also betrayed by people who were very close to him. And he has mentioned their names. And he has said that one of the things that informs this betrayal and standing away from him is the love for the world. And he says like this in verse 16 and 17, At my first defense, no one came to support me, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side, my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message may be fully proclaimed and all Gentiles might hear it. Brothers and sisters, let us focus. Let us focus. Although those that we stand with may show signs that we are not together, and if others will outrightly oppose our mission, others will run away from us, let us be prepared to continue with the work of mission. Even in petroleum and isolation, St. Paul was not deterred from spreading the word of God. He found strength in God because he says, the Lord stood beside him and gave him the support that he required to carry out the mission so that the gospel can be heard by Gentiles. This teaches us that human support may fail, but the divine support is unwavering. Yeah, we might not feel like it, but God will not leave his, or his servant when they are doing his mission. No matter how we feel, the Lord is always with us as we go to the field doing his mission. When we compare this with what we have heard in the gospel according to St. Luke, our Lord Jesus Christ took seven, appointed 72. And if you can remember, even Moses appointed 72 who were to assist him. And God took a portion of his spirit and placed it into, into 72. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ is giving us insights as how we can carry out mission. He starts by saying that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. He wants us to pray that God will send us out with many more workers so that we can go into the field. Brothers and sisters, as we continue with mission, may we pray that within this family of cathedral, God will touch the hearts of others who will also come and help in spreading the gospel. Our mission team went around, and I want to tell you that people received the Christ. And I believe that there are many more there who want to hear the word of God. Let us pray that God will give us more workers. Jesus provides in specific instructions for mission. Go out with urgency, seek out peace, and offer healing and proclamation of the gospel. This should be our approach in spreading the gospel of Christ. And in putting them together, St. Paul was nearing the end of his life, but he writes with urgency and passion. His personal experiences of hardship 
petroleo and divine support reason must resonate deeply with what we are doing, urging us to remain faithful regardless of the circumstances. Our Lord Jesus Christ was very strategic in sending the 72, which signifies the importance of preparation and the partnership in ministry. The harvest metaphor underscores the abundance of opportunities for ministry and the critical need for dedicated workers. Let us pray that the Lord of harvest will give us these workers who will go out with us and who will be dedicated in ministry. In conclusion, we look at Paul and Jesus' teachings. They remind us that we have to stay vigilant. Vigilant that nothing is going to impede our focus. Let us proclaim the gospel boldly. Let us be ready to endure hardships with faith and approach our mission with urgency and compassion. May we be renewed in our commitment, knowing that we are a part of God's grand mission, empowered by his unwavering support through the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, go forth with renewed purpose, serving faithfully and courageously in his name. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we have seen lessons in your word from our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our beloved apostle, Saint Paul. We have also seen what Saint Luke has recorded for us in the New Testament. Lord, we pray that you will empower us, you will strengthen us, Lord, as we go out for mission, that our hearts will be strengthened and that you will guide us and guide our efforts so that we can go to the field and do the work that you have given us. Help us, Almighty Father, to fulfill our ministries so that we can also look ahead, as our great brother St. Paul said, that he's looking ahead for a crown of righteousness. Help us, Lord, that even as we approach danger, let us always find solace that we have kept the faith, we have learned the rest, kept the faith, and we have done all that is required of us in proclaiming your gospel. This is our sincere prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen.